abandonment, a betrayal, and rejection. Then what? That could be a big then what for people because abandonment, betrayal, and rejection, well, they often go hand in hand. They happen to people in many different ways. It usually starts in childhood, but boy, we aren't going to figure it out or learn about it till adulthood. Within the realm of abandonment, betrayal, and rejection, there's so much actually that people could probably relate to in probably thematic or archetypal similar ways, but, but in each their own individual ways, which is kind of sad in a way, isn't it? And then, but yet so many of us know, so many of us know that a lot of our lives, or maybe people are still discovering that a lot of our experience in life is going to be driven and, and have a filter of abandonment, betrayal, and rejection. Some really painful aspects of life that I think I've found in my own life to, uh, to just continue to make me stronger that initially, for sure, made me stronger. And I had to stretch and grow because when people are abandoned and emotionally abandoned more often than not, but abandonment has, there's many different types of abandonment and many different reasons for it and betrayed and rejected. Um, such primal wounding, actually, and such a, you know, to different degrees for people. I guess in my life, it's interesting because I think, I mean, I know I went through all of that, probably on steroids, unfortunately, which isn't everybody's case. If we don't do our work, it's not so easy to stand up to all the people in the world in various different positions, be they have a modicum of power or a lot of power, or maybe next to no power, but they're going to still bully. deal with the situations, how people go back and do inner child work, especially for, for all, you know, hey, topic of abandonment, betrayal, and rejection applies to everything that I talk about here on this channel and, and that people are dealing with in different iterations of things. But yeah, you betcha, all of those three are at the heart of codependency as well, which I've been focusing on a lot lately, but that's not to say that's all I'm here to talk about. Control at the end of the day. And that's where, too, when we have our ego boundaries intact, first of all, and other boundaries, and we've done the work to know who we are, there's so much in those words, and more to the point, the experience of them in early childhood, how we do the work, how people heal, what codependency means, and how abandonment, betrayal, and rejection will also lead to BPD, to NPD, to other things for some people. And the key thing is, when I, when I, you know, put the title there, then what? It's sort of like, so where, where are people at with your experiences with this? If you're thinking about it and, and you know, I, I'm just here to say, no matter where you're at, like people that, that, that have something we need manipulate us to jump through their hoops. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, and, and it can lead to the question, you know, what's been their experience? What are they going through? What don't they know? Hey, you can only bend so much. When, again, what's at the heart of codependency, broken mutuality, and broken reciprocity. So, any point in life, this can be really painful and really traumatic for people in their own lives, in relationships, etc. He said, AJ, some people say they don't blame, but don't know the definition. Yes, good point. And can't recognize their own behavior. That's very true. And... And what I would say about people that can't recognize their own behavior, that's even more when each one of us needs to make sure that we have done or are doing or continue to do our work to be mindful to where our boundaries are. Because this is what I'm talking about. Not when somebody's in a relationship with somebody or in proximity or have different roles, people with different um, places in our lives, but... Many of them are going to try the same base tactics that are very, very unevolved. You know, emotionally speaking, they continue to have the same freaking characteristic patterns of exceptionally poor communication skills because they're in their, I don't know, whatever's underpinning that for each of these people, but they're in this like little power position 
and they're in this little bureaucracy and they just treat people like, you know, cattle. They just treat everybody with this disrespect called, what happened? Well, you must have done something to make that happen. Think about your childhood, though, if you haven't worked all this through yet. Think about if you've been in a relationship with a cluster B, other different situations. The abandonment, the betrayal, the rejection, the unmet needs, and not being seen, and not being heard, the constant ways that all kinds of people, from the beginnings of our lives and all through our lives, are going to play, try to play this bullshit. And people that don't recognize it for what it is yet still get very hurt by it. Or cloud why? Um, You said emotions are hard to bear. Well, they can be for sure because you have to be strong enough in yourself to know when somebody one way or another is playing you. And, 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 And about abandonment and betrayal and rejection in childhood or any one of those three and more, if if people don't realize what's happened and, and work to heal that, recover as much as possible, right? It's not 100%. Then people like that get to have so much more effect on you than they should because parents have a huge effect on us and we can't help that because when we're born, when we're little, the brain's still developing, we need them to feed us, we, you know, we're in a helpless situation. So a lot of times people who haven't quite got through some issues yet or don't know maybe what's going on, what they're still caring from their childhoods, they will easily get very triggered, emotions run amok, not know how to cope, and often be re-victimized over and over in all kinds of different situations. Marcus, with my previous partner, if I stayed in my needs, she would literally walk out the door, get in her car, and drive off. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I was punished by, sorry, the, oh, literally, yes, um, being abandoned. Oh, fed right into your issues, yes. And that that's a really good example of something at a deeper level, right, in a relationship where that's going to hit you a lot harder than the, what you're saying there, Marcus. Like, it's terrible. Uh, people, a lot of people do that kind of thing because, well, you know, they could be cluster B, but they don't have to be. Marilyn said, yes, my father abandoned me when I was nine. And he put me in a group home, didn't see him for a year, and now haven't seen him in 10 years. Oh, wow, I'm sorry to hear that, because because there's emotional abandonment, and then that's another form of abandonment, too. And, you know, whenever you're abandoned at a young age, or these kind of things are running throughout your childhood, where, where you're just not having your needs met, you're being taught to you're abandoning yourself and re-abandoning yourself and re-abandoning yourself, because and betraying yourself because you've been abandoned and betrayed and that's what they taught you how to do you know and that's the real tragedy of it all marcus and i've always chosen partners who replay that wow yeah i'm sorry to hear that and yet i'm on the 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 other you know so so that's like the really painful part and then on the other side of it all is Marcus, and I wonder, you you must be thinking about this probably, but like the question is, and so what can I learn from this? And yeah, where does it go back to? And what might that mean that you'd benefit from working on a little bit in terms of what happened to you in the past? Because it this is what's so powerful. Except for people who forget parts of their past because of extreme trauma, we all are products of our past in some way or other. And and that's what our experiences, not that's not why they happen, but that's why horrible experiences in life are what they're trying to make us more consciously aware of so that we can help out the wounded inner child inside and reparent that child and grow. Um, and then we can stand firmly in front of people who might be pulling this, that, or the other thing. And first of all, we won't get into relationships with them again. And second of all, We're not going to just sit back and let them define a reality for us or put us in our place or millions of things that can happen that actually happen in our childhoods when we couldn't speak up. Not only about other people, but it took me a long time to find my voice. And as you can tell now, I use it a lot. What you said, Marcus, it's like, so you have a repetition compulsion pattern there. I wonder if that's something that you're more aware of yet 
Marcus, or where you're at with that, because, well, you're aware, obviously, because you said, and you've always chosen partners who replay that. And so then um, it sounds like maybe you had a parent that was doing something very similar or something that would have been abandoning, whether or not it was a absolute abandonment like that or like just driving away or some kind of emotional or psychological abandonment. I have had victim mentality for uh, some time, but treated and have met two persons with heavy victim mentality. It's very difficult to keep close because their needs seem to be never enough and it's enslaving. Well, I guess my question to you to think about would be, why would you want to try to stay close to people with, as you put it, uh, heavy victim mentalities? Because that's the thing that people do sometimes and people are trying to be kind, but it um, it's going to keep your focus on them and then perhaps you're sacrificing too much. I don't know. That would be for you to decide. Oh, it's it's sort of uh, er Eric, sort of, right? I hope I'm pronouncing that right, spelled really uniquely. You said, I don't see the point. Eric, is there, uh, I don't think I'm making only one point. Um, I'm hoping people might share some of their experiences or their feelings about the subject I've chosen or whatever else. So I wonder, Eric, what point perhaps might you be expecting or looking for? And I mean that sincerely. I think the one point I'm trying to make is that uh, amongst all kinds of different issues that people will have in life, codependency arises out of abandonment, betrayal, and rejection. And uh, then people are not securely attached. So it's avoidant, anxious, uh, avoidant or anxious or whatever, you, you know, different styles of attachment. But it is the recipe that sets up the trauma bond. And then people go on to be in relationships uh, often with somebody with a cluster B personality disorder. And... And then there's all the work of trying to figure out how did you, how did that happen? What does that mean? Because it's no one's fault when that happens. No one's fault what happens to them in childhood either. But the responsibility to sort of start to put the puzzle pieces together to be able to deal with what people are still carrying in their lives from childhood that will definitely have a lot to do with whether people feel happy inside right now and can validate things for themselves or whether they're still looking outside of themselves externally for that validation maybe for people with codependency in terms of being a rescuer trying to fix somebody else trying to be the hero needing someone else needing to fix someone else to feel okay yourself and some people most people with codependency are knowingly um, subconsciously are trying to help others, not not to get like a narcissist or anything, but to have the other person hopefully turn around and reciprocate and give them something they need, which often for people wasn't their experience in childhood. Is going slow in relationships, especially in the beginning, a bad thing? I keep losing out. No, actually going slow in the beginning of relationships is a really healthy thing. But in today's world, more people than not aren't as healthy as we could hope they would be. And so they're often in a hurry. So the fact that you keep losing out, that has to feel pretty frustrating, if not painful. But you're probably losing out to cluster Bs. You're probably losing out to people who are impulsive and compulsive and not the healthiest, who are wanting things to go faster because the faster things go the less likely the chance in a high percentage of cases, if not like 95%, there's going to be a healthy dynamic there. Eric, I'm not doing too well. Sorry for being rude. Oh, I, I you know, hey, you could, it could be taken as rude, but I didn't really take it as rude. I didn't judge it. Um, that's fine. And I'm sorry to hear that you're not doing too well. So maybe you'd like to share a little bit about maybe what's happening for you. I, uh, that's totally fine when you said you don't see the point. Like, no, I didn't take it as rude. Because, hey, it sounds like you might be really hurting. And maybe whatever point you'd like to see or need to see or however you could feel better, maybe you just 
can't find that right now in your own life and that hurts and i think today like oh my god so much about this day and age we live in is so much more complicated relationally speaking and every other which way speaking it, it all comes down to how much we know ourselves and how we create meaning in our lives and and that's not something that we all are supposed to do in step or the same as each other right but that's something that we each need to have the freedom and the opportunity to pursue understanding more about. Ricardo, it's a Maryland, same here. The last one put me off dating for a long time. Um, I'm quite happy on my own now. Well, and that's great, uh, Ricardo, because to be happy in oneself, self-accepting, and just achieve a really good balance of you know, self-care, being kind to yourself, liking, loving yourself in healthy ways, right? That's, uh, when we, the more comfortable we are in our own skin, the more comfortable we are in our own emotional landscapes, etc. the more we know ourselves, then, y y you know, we don't need any of that external validation or whatever, you know, what it's still nice to connect with people and everything, of course, but uh, relationships, there's a lot of complications why a lot of people aren't going to be in relationships or don't want to choose relationships anymore. Aside from each person's own personal experience, um, you know, for men today, there's the red pill men and the MGTOW men, and, and um, they have every right to their own views of what's happened and what's happening in the world. And...